crazy. But the reality is there are still 30 million people enslaved in the world today. That's more than any point in history, number-wise. Thankfully, over the last 20 years, there's been a movement of people who have been rising up. I call them modern-day abolitionists or freedom fighters, who have said enough is enough. We have to stop this crime that's been going on for thousands of years. But before we go and talk about those individuals, we need to understand those who are, who are actually perpetrating this crime, the traffickers themselves. Now, I've been doing this work for all over 10 years now, and what I've learned is that these people, well, they're ruthless business people. They know how to make money. They've commodified human life to just make buckets of money. In fact, $150 billion a year, according to the ILO. That's more than Google, Nike, and Starbucks combined in 2015. This is enormous. Most of us don't know about it. It's also really important to point out that these individuals are not encumbered by any kind of social norms. They do what they want to do. They cut corners. They don't care about laws. They don't care about cultural norms or social norms. They do what they need to do to make money. All right, how about going back to those individuals who uh, are fighting this crime? Who are we? Well, for the last 20 years, we've been mostly volunteers, nonprofits, NGOs, well-meaning individuals who want to see real global change. However, if we're sitting in the shower and the water's coming down and we were like, we're filling up, we're, we're lucky if we have $150 million to fight this crime. So we've got cutthroat business people versus nonprofits, the business people with $150 billion and us in the nonprofit world with $150 million. And those who are fighting the crime, well, we tend to be encumbered by mm, pretty strict social norms. You shouldn't be paying people too much money to work there. Have you ever heard that? Too much overhead at that organization. Well, okay, well, let's, exp let's uh, dive into this, how we're gonna fight this crime. Remember, we need game-changing capital and we need game-changing uh, talent. So my organization, Not For Sale, we started downstream, just like every other NGO. For example, one of our projects in Lima, Peru, we were working to pull kids out. Imagine this raging stream, 30 million people, all enslaved today. So in Lima, three prevalent forms of forced labor for kids are the commercial sex trade, forced into begging rings, like the movie Slumdog Millionaire, and also third, forced into domestic work in homes. And we were getting kids out, hopefully into to our home, and then hopefully in edu education, and then the long-term goal is uh, self-empowerment, long-term. Well, after doing this for years and years and years, what we realized is that we were just doing the same thing over and over again. And I think that's called the definition of insanity, when you do the same thing over and over again, get the same negative result. We're not stopping this crime, we're just downstream. So we had to fundamentally look in the mirror, look at our hearts, and think about a change. I call this like our vocational inflection point, because for me, when we had started in our sale, that was opening our heart. However, when we realized we were just up against it, we opened our minds back up and kind of turned the business and entrepreneurial mind back on. And for me, where the, the heart and the head meet is vocation or calling. So, what it took was just kind of looking at our project a little bit differently in Lima, almost like from a research and development perspective. So we started really looking at our data. And what we found is that a disproportionate number of the kids that were coming, from, uh, coming into our project in Lima were coming from regions of the Peruvian Amazon, like Madre de Dios. So there we go, we trudged off, both literally and figuratively, figurative, figuratively upstream to the Peruvian Amazon. And for a year, we conducted research. We wanted to understand what the root cause was of this crime. And what we found was that environmental degradation from things like gold mining, strip uh, uh, forestry, as well as uh, other forms of mining, were causing incredible disruption of thousands of years of way of life. So individuals, indigenous communities, who had lived self-sufficiently off the land, were now, for the first time in the last 30 years, thrust into the cash economy. Here's how it plays out on a very specific level. In one family unit, 
I literally sat with a grandmother who spoke native tongue, an indigenous tongue. Within one generation, granddaughter only spoke Spanish because she was in the cash economy. You imagine that kind of disruption just in your own family unit due to these big things going on around you. So that's where traffickers were coming in. They were preying on that vulnerability. And we knew that we had to fundamentally rethink how we created real economic change in that community. And we felt like maybe we had hit the, the, uh, the end point for what Not For Sale, our nonprofit, could do. We had to bring together people way smarter than, than us. And if we had known you then, we probably would have invited all of you to come along too. We invited the top 50 people in our network at the time. And there's people like Jack Dorsey who started Twitter, uh, people who were on the ground floor of eBay, uh, Google, Facebook, you name it. We're lucky to be in such a hotbed of, of entrepreneurialism in Northern California. And we brought them in to uh, uh, help us think this through. And over 36 hours, we literally started with thousands of ideas. I have a process down. And over th uh, these thousand ideas then whittled down to eight. And these eight were the kind of the, the final ideas. And the winning idea, believe it or not, came from an incredible baseball player, major league baseball player, who had, his degree is in high school. That's his highest degree, but he's got a wicked left-hand curveball. His name is Jeremy Affel, just retired from the San Francisco Giants. And Jeremy, his idea was so practical. There's a beverage. How do we harvest ingredients and train the communities in some of the existing practices they already had, kind of bring those back, but incentivize them to ensure that those ingredients are getting to marketplace in a healthy, fair trade, and organic manner. We left that event, and we did what we call ruthless execution. We believe to create social change, you've got to be as ruthless as the people who are perpetrating this crime. And I don't mean that by you know, exploiting people. I mean that by the exact opposite. We have to expect more out of ourselves as social change agents than the traffickers themselves. We've got to get out there and execute. So within 18 months, we had a product on shelves. REBEL stands for roots, extracts, berries, bark, and leaves. Those are the ingredients that go into the beverage. Now remember, at the beginning, we talked about the need for this space to fight this crime. We need game-changing talent, and we need game-changing uh, capital. Well, we got that in the form of Cheryl O'Loughlin and Paulo Hawkin. Cheryl O'Loughlin is the former Cliff Bar CEO. She's come on board with REBEL. Cheryl brought Cliff Bar from $110 million a year in sales to $350 million a year in sales. That's game changing. That's what we expect from her with Rebel, too. Come on, Cheryl. <laughs> Paulo Hawken. We went and recruited Paulo. He was our founding CEO. Paulo happens to be one of the most incredible drink specialists. He's won multiple Drink of the Year awards. I didn't know that such a thing existed, but he's won it. And so now he's stepped out of the founding CEO role and is the genius behind all our products. He's the pr product genius. I want that title too. <laughs> Game-changing capital. All right. Mem remember, the space has $150 million a year in it. We just raised $4 million into Rebel just in the last, last four months. In other words, that's almost 4% of the entire anti-human trafficking space's capital just from one company, one company. And we've been able to harness the social purpose of the company to recruit incredible board members like Dwayne and Mark. All right, why did we start the company? Let's remember, the purpose was to help the communities in the Proven Amazon. Well, just one supply chain that we helped set up that's fair trade and organic is a, a Brazil nut line, and now those communities are selling 130,000 tons of Brazil nuts to Costco and the body shop. And we're working to get them into our Rebel drinks too. See, it's not about creating a system where they're further dependent on us. It's about creating a system that empowers the community so that we can step back. That's empowerment. Additionally, this year, we believe that Rebel's 2.5% gross return back to not for sale, which is built into the model of the company, will actually cover almost 30% of not for sale's overhead. So when you donate to not for sale later, that's not even a hint. Just telling you you gotta do it, it's really important. 
you'll know that more and more of your money goes directly to projects. To us, that's really important. And of course, we believe that the supply chain has to be clean. So we have an aspirational goal to know every single supplier within our supply chain. It's very important to us. Okay, I got a dirty, crazy secret to tell you. I don't care about Rebel. I don't care about products. It's just another thing to me. It's kind of weird, huh? I help co-create the product. But the thing I do care about is the fact that Rebel is a tool. It's a tool to create social change. It is a platform that allows us to go and recruit incredibly talented people like Paolo and Cheryl and go raise capital in a fundamentally different way to create social change. And they're incentivized to include those who are traditionally left out of the global marketplace. To me, that alignment and that incentive, that making sure that we're incentivizing everyone along the way to treat each other fairly is the path forward. It's what every company needs to look like in the future. So I ask you, be a rebel. Join this movement so that no one is for sale. Thank you.